You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to the options playbook, the program where we break down cutting edge option strategies and explain how you can incorporate them into your own portfolio. Whether you're looking to grow your capital with some offensive maneuvers or protect your investments with defensive plays, you can find them all in the options playbook. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA and SIPC. Now, let's open the playbook and get started. Welcome to Options Playbook Radio. I'm your host, Brian Overby, Ally Invest Senior Options Analyst and author of the Options Playbook. All right. Well, we had a great week last week answering listener questions, and this week we're going to get right back into strategies. And if you've listened to Options Playbook Radio, you know that around earnings, I kind of like to do something that's got two or three legs. And it's been a while from looking back at the archives when I've just talked about a just straight out standard butterfly around earnings. And as always on Options Playbook Radio, we're not looking at the specific underlying trying to make a forecast. We're trying to talk about setup. Uh, and to me, the strategy is just as important about the stock that you're doing the trade on and the, the option pricing conditions as it is uh, your forecast on the underlying. We just want to try to look at scenarios where this strategy might be a little bit more interesting than that strategy. So today we're just going to look at a good old-fashioned butterfly. And a good friend of mine likes to call it a time bomb butterfly because we're going to do it around earnings. The biggest thing that's fun about uh, butterflies around earnings is if you're correct on your forecast and you do a short-term option trade, you have two good things that happen to butterflies. When you're correct on your forecast, you want the – at the money option contract, the strike that you sold, you want those options to go as close to zero as possible, as quickly as possible. And the way to make that happen is to have a short time period and also have a crunch in implied volatility. Well, in Costco, we happen to have a situation where they're going to be announcing earnings after the close on a Thursday, which leaves one day for the option contracts to live in the May 31st expiration. So I should at this point let you know that we are taping options playbook radio on Wednesday, the 29th of May, and the markets are closed right now. We're going to look at Costco. They're going to announce earnings on the 30th, which is a Thursday after the close. So I would prefer to do this a little bit closer to the close, which is usually the case when you're doing something around earnings. But we're going to look at a call butterfly. I have no opinion on the direction of Costco, and that's always the case with Options Playbook Radio. These are never meant to be recommendations. But you could do the same, using the same type of logic, you could just look to the bear side and you could do this type of butterfly that we're going to talk about just using puts. So with that said, let's jump into the standard butterfly. We're not skipping strikes. We're not modifying anything. We're not back spreading it. We're not front spreading it. We're doing a flat out butterfly buy one sell two buy one and we're going to go 10 points wide in costco so once again this is going to be kind of an all or nothing type 
strategy because we're doing it around earnings. So you want to use your speculative paper money to do this type of trade. But you'd be looking at Costco that closed today down a bit. The market had a tough day today. Uh, Costco closed at 240.69. It's down $5.62 on the day. The overall market uh, dropped, but it, it did come back. It was down more as the day began. But right now we have the S&P 500 index that closed at 2,783, down two cents on the day. And then we also have the VIX index that climbed up quite a bit. We're above the 15 level again, which means there's a little bit of nervousness in the marketplace. And I think that's been the case for the last couple of weeks. So it's trading at 1790. That was up 40 cents on the day. So we got a volatile marketplace going on via the VIX index. And we also have earnings in Costco. So I, if we look at the implied volatilities on Costco overall, there, it's it's a wholesale retail stock, and implied volatilities, just in general, aren't extremely high. The the Costco stocks will normally trade if you just look at a volatility chart, and inside the Ally Invest platform, we always look at a thirty day implied versus a 30-day weighted average historical. But the implied volatility, Costco hangs down around 15% a lot. Uh, the high end, it gets up to around 32. Around earnings, like right now, it's around 25 on the 30-day basis. But the near-term implied volatility, the May 31st expiration, is trading at a third or 62 percent implied volatility as of this taping so the first thing we want to figure out from costco and uh doing any trade around earnings is what's the expected move in the underlying based off of the nearest expiration which we're going to be use using the may 31st expiration and if we look at the most at the money long straddle with Costco closed at two, closing at 240.69, that would be the 240 strike call and a 240 strike put. That always gives us a feel for what the marketplace is implying the move could be all the way out to that expiration date on May 31st, which is only a few days away. So a lot of people like to think of this as the expected move after earnings. Like it's basically the line in the sand, the over under, if you will, if you're using betting terms. Um, the midpoint on that is $9.80. We're going to round it up to 10 because that's actually the natural or the asking price. And it just makes the math easy. It's not an exact science by any means. So we're going to go 10 points away. We're going to flip a coin and today we're going to be bullish just because the coin turned up heads. So we're going to go with call options and uh, we're going to start by buying an at the money option contract on the May 31st expiration. So our butterfly is going to be a one by two by one and it's going to be equal width between the strikes we're going to buy the may 31st 2040 call sell two of the may 31st 2050 calls and sell and then buy our wing that is our protection uh the may 31st 2060 calls it's 10 points wide total the net debit is two dollars and 70 cents on the trade since this is 10 points wide, that's the maximum that it could sell for, which is $10. So in, on this trade around earnings, the maximum we can lose is what the net debit is. That's $270 plus commission. You always got to think about commissions, especially on butterflies, because we have many different legs that we're placing. And you take that 270 and you subtract that from $10, and it says that our max upside here would be – Seven dollars and thirty cents. So we have two hundred and seventy dollars for every one by two by one at risk. Our max upside is seven dollars and thirty cents or seven hundred and thirty dollars less commission on the upside. And by setting this up around in in earnings, we actually have a, a, a chance that if this thing does make the expected move with the stock at 240 
Expected move is 10 points. That would be 250. And we get implied volatility to come in, which usually happens after an earnings announcement. And obviously, we got a huge rate of time decay. That's why a butterfly is an interesting way to get bullish or bearish on this trade. Now, if you just bought the 240 call, that's going to be trading for almost double what the butterfly is. And our deal, our ideal situation is from 240 to 250, that 10 point swing, that expected move type range. Um, we're going to be able to get into that long call, if you will, from 240 to 250 or, or long call spread for a reasonable amount for a lot less than just buying that call option outright. Now, the downside is, is that it's limited, but we have a range that if the market does bounce back after earnings, we have a 20 point range that is within the strikes of the butterfly. Now, if you want to get particular about it, our break evens are going to be the 240 call plus the net debit, which would be 240, 270, or the 260 call, the protection call that we bought, minus the net debit, which would be 257.30. So with that range, you have a 20-point range minus the 270 uh, on the downside and minus the 270 debit on the upside. So you basically got a 14, $14.60 range that if this lands within that range at expiration, uh, you sh you'll have some type of profitability anywhere between 240.270 and 257.30. So if you're dead wrong, well, yeah, you're also going to lose money quickly too. <laughs> That's the downside of doing it such a short term is that if the market does go against you, uh, the option contracts will, will come in quite a bit as far as time decay and volatility is concerned. And in that instance, you will also lose capital quickly in a hurry. And the uh, the worst case scenario is that all the options would expire worthless uh, on the downside as the market went down, and you would lose that $270 or $2.70 for every one by two by one butterfly. Okay, so I'm going to recap the strategy, then I'm going to just talk a little bit about the timing. Um, we're looking at just doing a flat out straight up butterfly. Costco, they're going to be announcing earnings tomorrow on the on the 30th after the close, today right now is the 29th, and Costco closed at 24069. The expected move uh, based off the long straddle in the May 31st expiration is 10 points. We're going to buy the most at the money option uh, with the May 31st expiration, uh, the 240 call, sell two of the 250 calls, and then buy one of the 260 calls net debit of $270 per one by two by one spread plus commissions or entered at $2.70. Okay. Now, why this strategy? Why are we talking about a butterfly? You could obviously flip this around and you could use puts if you were bearish and you could buy the 240 put, sell the 230 put, and buy the 220 put, and then you could play this on the bear side. But the main reason why we're looking at this strategy is because of the timing of their earnings announcement. Not many companies announce on the Thursday of that weekly expiration in the options world. And, the, and it just really gives you, uh, you have an expensive underlying at $2.40. And it gives you a real dynamic, if you're correct, on multiple leg option strategies in that you got one day for these options to live after the announcement and usually implied volatilities come in. So we're just looking at doing this strategy. You flip the coin, you decide if you want to be bull or bear, but we're doing it because of the timing on their earnings, not because we're a bull or a bear on Costco. It's just an interesting situation to do it in. And butterflies allow you to limit that risk. And even in this instance on the call side, we're starting out as of tonight, as of uh, the, the market close on 529. We're going to be 70 cents in the money already because Costco is at 240.69 
and our option contract that we're buying, the most expensive one that is a little bit in the money, and it's the 240 call. All right. Well, <clears throat> that's going to be it for this episode of Options Playbook Radio. We'll come back. We'll see how this trade does. If I if I'm doing this as a paper trade, I would probably let the whole day of trading in Costco happen, and I would do this a little closer to the event. Why is that? Mainly because we're trading the earnings. We're not trading the general price movement. Uh, if we put this on in on the open tomorrow, Costco could really move against us in implied volatility's increase. And if that's the scenario, that's a, that's not a good scenario for us overall. We want to do this because of the pricing dynamics on a company that's announcing earnings uh, before a Friday expiration, and they're announcing on the Thursday after the close. Okay, so now this time I really mean that that's it for this episode of Options Playbook Radio. If you have a topic you'd like us to discuss on the show or a question you'd like us to answer on the program, you can send them directly to me at theoptionsguy@invest.ally.com. Thanks for listening. We'll be back at the same time, same place next week. Until then, may all the options you bought finish into money and all the ones you sold finish out. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA and SIPC. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider or via questions at the options insider.com.